Today, the committee will address legislation that will modernize and reauthorize the small business innovation research and small business technology transfer programs. These programs, which help spur innovation and job creation throughout the country, were last updated eight years ago. Research conducted by SBIR and STTR awardees have helped address our country's most important research and development challenges. This includes strengthening our national security and our public health infrastructure. The continued success of the SBIR and STTR program is dependent on three primary issues. First, the program must remain highly competitive. Second, applicants and awardees must have access to financing of all types, including venture capital. Small firms must not be penalized for accepting the investment they need to advance their R&D efforts. Third, more needs to be done to bring these breakthrough products to the market. We must promote greater commercialization in these initiatives. The reauthorization legislation that we will mark up today is an important step toward securing the future success of these important programs. We have worked closely with our colleagues on the Committee on Science and Technology. To this end, we have taken the legislation they marked up yesterday afternoon and incorporated it into the consolidated bill before us today. We have also included amendments from Representatives Wilson and Smith that were adopted in the Science Committee's markup yesterday. Among the, the most notable legislative changes to the programs are increases in the set aside for both SBIR and STTR. This will allow more firms to participate in federal R&D activities. This is especially important for SBIR, where we raised the set-aside level from 2.3 to 3 percent. The bill also raises award sizes, but places substantial notification and reporting requirements on agencies seeking to exceed these limits. This will ensure that jumbo awards are being reviewed and overseen. Perhaps most importantly, the legislation restores the 2003 eligibility rules permitting small businesses with venture capital investment to qualify for SBIR awards. This is not a groundbreaking change. We are simply reinstating the policies that were in place up to 2003. We have done so in a balanced manner and included important safeguards and protections. Small businesses are the focus of this policy. A single venture capital firm cannot own a majority of an SBIR awardee, nor can they have a majority of seats on its board of directors. In addition, limitations are placed on the venture capital company, including its size and its control by larger corporations. Overall, this once again gives entrepreneurs, not Washington bureaucrats, the final say on how their company should be financed. H.R. 5819 takes steps to develop the next generation of small research firms. It will do so by providing resources to increase SBIR and STTR applications from rural areas and from those owned by women, service disabled veterans and minorities as recommended by Congressman Mr. Cuellar. It makes resources available that small businesses need to transition SBIR funded research from the laboratory to the marketplace. This includes making commercialization a priority and supplying the resources for transition assistance, programmatic expertise, mentoring activities, and the facilitation of key business partnerships. H.R. 5819 will enable more small research companies to advance the innovations that have made our economy so diverse and vibrant. It has the support of the Biotech Industry Organization and the National Venture Capital Association. In passing this bill, we will ensure that SBIR and STTR awards remain competitive, fund top-notch research, and produce cutting-edge breakthroughs. Doing so 
will continue to help create high paying jobs, reduce our trade deficit, and emphasize the importance of math and science education to America's students. I will now like to yield to Ranking Member Shabot for his opening remark. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here as we mark up legislation to reauthorize the Small Business Innovation Research Program and the Small Business Technology Transfer Program, or SBIR and STTR programs, respectively. These two programs are an example of highly successful federal initiatives to encourage economic growth and innovation within the small business community by assisting in the funding that is critical to the startup and development uh, stages of small business companies. Not only does it spur growth in individual companies, the program stresses the importance of this committee's and the entire federal government's commitment to expand and diversify research opportunities to small business. Small businesses drive innovation. It's of the utmost importance that we continue to foster growth in this segment of our economy. This is especially important in the new world economy where the technology and technological advantage of uh, the United States uh, has hit on the rest of the world is not as large, unfortunately, as it used to be. Uh, it's said that nobody has a patent on good new ideas. While that is true, it can be difficult for a small company with limited resources to take that idea and manufacture it into a product or process. Programs like SBIR and STTR provide a bridge between product conception and marketability, a bridge of vital importance for innovative ideas to become reality. The new technologies and discoveries that come out of this program go a long way toward keeping our competitive edge in the world marketplace. The SBIR and STTR programs are the kind of public-private partnership that is essential to the continued growth of our economy. The legislation we have before us goes a long way toward strengthening these two programs. Among other things, the legislation requires greater oversight by agency heads and better reporting of information to Congress. The bill also increases the maximum award sizes to allow grant winners greater ability to develop their new technologies and provides agencies even greater flexibility to administer their programs. That said, I believe the bill is, of course, not perfect. Compromises have been made by both parties and both committees of jurisdiction. The chairwoman and I have continued to work together along with our staffs who have also, I think, uh, worked very closely together this year um, and last year in a strong bipartisan manner in an effort to craft a bill that truly represents a victory for American small businesses. And I thank her for that. I would request that, as she has done since the beginning of Congress, uh, that the chairwoman continue to work with us as this bill moves forward uh, through the process. And again, I thank everyone for being here today, the members, uh, the chairwoman, uh, and, and everyone here. And I yield back the balance of my time. 